what's going on? This is Sharif Bay with Kung Fu Life, and we're here at the Urban Action Showcase, uh, sponsored by HBO and Cinemax, and put together by my good friend and brother Demetrius Angelo, who's also in the film, also a martial artist, a Wing Chun martial artist, and um, I mean, this is an amazing event he's put together. You know, you've got a great mix of, um, you know, people from all ends of the spectrum, from martial artists to directors, producers. Mm -hmm. What's going on? This is Sharif. So Sharif Bay with Kung Fu Life. We have the Urban Action Showcase with movie star and martial artist Michael Jai Wei. Um, we're just talking about. Um, I want to get your take on martial arts. Uh, first, your background. You know, without, I mean, it's, I know it's crazy extensive. Where, you know, just your background on martial arts. I know you did the Kung Fu. Yeah, I, I did several styles. I, my main style is Kyokushin. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's my favorite style because of uh, the stringent nature of it and what it pulls out of you as far as you know, your discipline and your will. Yes. Uh, I think that's something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. So, that's, I mean, based on that discipline, I'm able to do a lot of things. But, um, you know, the martial arts is something that I, I owe a lot to. And so, above all, I owe honesty to the martial arts. And, you know, I don't see a lot of um, the, the, the tenets that I grew up with uh, evident in a lot of today's martial arts. Mm. And so, you know, I mean, I think it's a fight to keep that alive. So, you like, like what we call martial etiquette. Like, you, 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 is that what you're talking about? Like, what, how to conduct yourself? Or? Well, that's that's one part of it, but it, there's a large, there's a lot of it that um, it's kind of like, you know, society's become a lot more soft, especially yes. in the United States. Yes. It's almost like that, you know, everybody gets a trophy mentality, mm -hmm. and um, everybody gets a, a black belt nowadays without really working real hard for it. Yes. I don't believe in that. I, I, I don't subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole thing with um, with film, man. I mean, it's again, once again, it's such a powerful thing to see, you know, um, from like Fred Williamson, Jim Kelly, you know, these guys that cracked the door of, you know, Ron Van Cleef, all the way up to people like Ty Mac and yourself, you know, that are continuing this whole thing. Um, how did you get into film or into act, act in, in the action film? Well, I mean, I first got into film, per, you know, period. Right. I first wanted to establish myself as an actor first. Even though I was, you know, a martial artist, I even, uh, I even uh, denied uh, in some martial art roles early on. Yes. Until uh, really the time I did um, Universal Soldier. Two. Yes. That's the first time I was able to really highlight my martial arts skills, yes. and my desired effect happened. Is that people didn't really believe that that was me mm. that did it, and that's what I wanted to happen mm. because they're thinking that I'm an actor for it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. That's powerful because it shows yeah. the depth. It shows you know, you know, depth of we're not just boneheads of you know that can just move you know and, and, and actually have acting skill you yeah. know, and have presence and that's Cause, powerful. Yeah because I mean I knew without a doubt once you do martial art film they'll try to define you yes. as that. Even though I did Spawn after that and hadn't done another martial art film, right. I started already being considered a martial arts guy. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah, like, there's yeah. no martial arts in Spawn. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a fi sci-fi action movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did maybe a few kicks in it, but right. you know, that's about it. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. So, how do you, you know, I know you, 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 you're writing and you're doing other things behind the camera. How does that feel as opposed yeah. to being in front of the camera? Which is better for you? What do you like? Well, I, I like having more control of the, the, uh, the world that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. Not many people understand all aspects of that world. I understand it as, from, as, from the martial arts standpoint. So I know what martial artists want to see. Mm. Then I understand from a filmmaking standpoint because I know how to capture it in the camera, yes. and I know what the audience, uh, like the dramatic audience, wants to see, yes. not just martial arts. So you know you, you you combine the two, and so I like my movies to have uh, dramatic content, yeah. even if martial arts wasn't even involved in it. Nice, nice, nice. So that's why that's why I challenge people to do. It's like. You know, you, you look at Blood and Bone, yeah. take the martial arts out of it, you still have a movie. Exactly. You know, you look at 
you know, never back down, it's still a movie. Exactly. It's still a story that you can adhere to. Talk real quick, you know, about Blood and Bone, which is a powerful movie. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, some um, behind the scenes footage of you and another fighter. Um, where you were, you were, you were, you were dialoguing with him about the the, the, the um, technical aspects of punching, right? Yes, yes. Kimbo Kim Slice. How yes. was that? I mean, to us on screen, that was amazing. But to watch that was like ridiculous. Well, uh, uh, well, there's the sport part of martial arts, and then there's like. A lot of people learn the sport, yes. and you know they hadn't spent time honing the basics. Well, when you do both, you're that much more of an effective fighter. Um, luckily, I was somebody who did both, yes. and there's aspects about even katas mm -hmm. that I put into fighting mm -hmm. that you know no other fighter mm -hmm. does. So therefore, it's very hard. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to mount a, a defense against yes. it when, when nobody's got that you know that kind of background. Yes. So it's it's really effective and um, but I, I don't fault a lot of people because you know sometimes it's boring to learn how to <laughs> move like for several years yes. doing this um, some of the basic you know the wax on wax off. Yes. So people yes, don't yes, yes. don't want to learn it. That's yeah, real. So, but but really, you learn that you're that much more of an effective. It fighter. just takes that much longer. This is what this is why you know Leota Machida, um, George Saint Pierre, and and Anderson Silva, are, are, you know, are where they are. They there's a there's a lot of basics there that other fighters don't have, and it, and he exploits it. Mm -hmm. they exploit these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. I think that goes back to I just want to throw this in because it, to me that's personal because the the mindset it takes to do the boring, repetitious, painful stuff over years mm -hmm. is what transforms the character. That's the real thing that, you know, in my opinion, my Sifu says it transforms the character. Absolutely. People, you know what I mean? Uh, this discipline, with, with discipline, it's about the stuff that you don't want to do. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to do katas because I love to fight. Yes. But forced, being forced to be a, a well-rounded martial artist yeah. doing, you know, doing Kung Fu forms. Right. Being a you know guy six foot two, two thirty, doing kung fu forms is humbling. It's a pain in the ass when all these <laughs> you know 140 pound guys can do all it. Place, right? You know, but you know it's like, but it only made me better. You know, yes. you know, like they they go up and then go to drop drop stance and then get back up. Yes, like this. Yes, and I gotta go. <laughs> But you know, I had to be as fast as them being with a bigger great bit of So the instead of complaining about it, I just did it. Or taught them. And so that made me better. Yes. So then I fought people that were my size and they couldn't move the way I did. So it just made me better. <laughs> I didn't rest on being a big strong guy. Yeah. Um that just make that make me limited to fight it because there's always guys who are bigger and stronger. Yeah, 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 yeah. But are they faster? Yeah. You know, there's a certain point where you can go where you're at your apex. Right. And um, I like to be at that spot. This is, I mean, it's kind of a rhetorical question because you mentioned it before, but I want to just ask it. Um, with regards to your non-martial roles, like with the Tyler Perry films and things like that, yeah. how did the discipline, or did the discipline of martial arts have an effect, or, or did it benefit you? Yeah, the, the, the martial arts, the discipline of martial arts affects me in every way. Yeah. If, like, the Tyler Perry thing, you know, we're doing, a lot of times we're doing six to eight shows in one week. It's a mental thing. It's like, you know, your mind is used to pitting itself against things that it doesn't want to do. Yes. And I could take something that I don't want to do and make it into something I want to do. What teaches me that? Martial arts. Because mm. my mind is strong. You know, I don't want to stay in this damn stance. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> it sucks. It hurts. You know, exactly. these, these guys half my weight can do it. They're, yeah. they're not holding, you know, as much as me and all this type of stuff. Right, whatever. Right, 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 right. But, you know, you suck it up and you do it, and and, and you you reap the benefits. Yes. But it's about you know building a strong mind. With a strong mind and discipline, you can do anything. Absolutely. So I mean, 
So even looking at me studying for six scripts in one week, mm. how does my mind think it's hard? N nothing's hard. Mm. In my mind, nothing's hard. You know? So, you know, I, I welcome the challenges uh, of any acting job. So, that's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's fun. How do you know um, Ron Van Cleef? How do you know, how do you know him? Well, of course, I know him as a fan and as a child, I'm looking at yeah. this man who's doing, you know, doing kung fu movies. Yes. This black man doing kung yes. fu movies in China. <laughs> yes. You know, that opened up my world in a exactly. great deal. Exactly. So, you know, you know, I know him from that, and then being able to shake the man's hand and talk to him, and you know, and you know, I'm going to be you know, training with him out in Hawaii. And, you know, he's he's a role model in life. You know, yeah. That's that's what a martial artist is. You look at that man. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. look at the shape he's in at his age, at yeah. seventy years old. Yeah. For instance, coming up, like watching Fred Williamson, watching um, you know all these guys, Jim Kelly. You know, there were images of strong African American, man, you know, manhood. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. An example to watch. You know, and 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 um. We don't see as much of that, but gentlemen like yourself, Time Act, other people are kind of keeping that up. You, you, you know what I mean? And it just happens to be related to action. It happens to be related to martial arts. So it's showing positive, strong images of manhood. You, you, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to all comedy, which is safe in Hollywood for our people to do. You, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I have a special, a special agenda on that. I mean, mm. I, it, it infuriates me that... Mm. You know, the uh, alpha male in Hollywood has kind of been, you know, I know. like, I know. you know, I castrated. Know. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why I did Black Dynamite, mm. uh, and I'm doing the things that I'm doing, you know, it's, it's I think manhood's been under attack in films and, and you know, just the media anyway. You know, black right, black and white. Yes, sir. You know, so yes, sir. it's just kind of, um, it's kind of a thing where, you know, I look at the 70s and every representation of, of, of black men and alpha males was in, in every movie back to back that all of our our films mm -hmm. you know we, we had Fred Williamson yeah. Jim Brown yeah. Richard Roundtree yeah. Calvin Lockhart yeah. you know, Billy D Williams all that stuff where are those images today it, 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 it's really it's really sickening but in a, in every white show mm -hmm. In white movie, you have a alpha white male in each one of them. And the, and the black people are usually somebody you pat on the head. Right. I, I don't understand how that that's going on. And, um, and, and frankly, it's a, it's it's how the fact that it's far worse now than it's been mm. <laughs> back in the day mm. is is amazing. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. So I mean, you know. I, I think there's something wrong with that, and I, I think it's it's t you know time we kind of get more in control of what we put out there yes. for our audience. Tyler yes. Perry to me is a hero. Yes, sir. he he uh, identified a sp specific sect, the, the uh, faith-based mm -hmm. sect in our community, mm -hmm. and he dealt directly to them. Yes. Regardless of Hollywood. Yes. And that's what I want to do with the Urban Action audience. Because I know that they exist, I know what they want to see, yes. and that's who I'm going to minister to. Mm -hmm. Brother, thank you again for the All right. All Sharif right. Bay with Kung Fu Life with Michael Jai White. Peace.